Seven things you probably didn't know, you need to know. I'm Jamie Easton. This is the standout. In the next seven minutes or so, we'll look back on a week where the Archbishop of Canterbury spoke out on plans to send asylum seekers to Rwanda. The war in Ukraine continued as the Mariupol Marines battled on. Boris came under new pressure over Partygate. And Prince Harry says his mum's still watching over him. This is the standout seven from the Smart Seven. Don't forget to hit the follow button to get your daily updates at 7 a.m. Boris Johnson headed off to India on Thursday, officially to work on improving trade relations and officially to escape the ongoing drama of Partygate. However, the day didn't go to plan. After an attempt to delay a Labour motion for a parliamentary investigation had to be abandoned after it became clear the government might not win the vote, Boris was under pressure from travelling journalists as soon as he landed in India. What I felt was people were saying, look, this looks as though we're trying to to stop stuff coming out. I didn't want that. I don't want this thing endlessly to, uh, to go on. But if you know, I, I have n- absolutely nothing, frankly, uh, to hide here. Chancellor of the Exchequer Rishi Sunak also chose Thursday to make his formal apology for the fine he incurred at the world's most famous birthday party. Well, I fully respect the decision that the police have reached. I paid the FPN uh, straight away and I'm extremely and sincerely sorry for the hurt and the anger that this has caused so many people. I've always acted, uh, I believe, in good faith with regard to what I've said to Parliament. In the Commons, Labour Deputy Leader Angela Rayner laid out the facts for Tory MPs. The Prime Minister is leading the Conservative Party into the sewer. It's now up to members opposite to decide whether it is a red line for the Prime Minister of this country to break the ministerial code, break the trust of the British public and get away with it. The vote to open a committee probe into Boris and whether he misled Parliament passed without a formal count and it appeared to be a serious embarrassment for the government. Treasurer of the 1920-22 committee, Tory MP Sir Geoffrey Clinton-Brown, thinks it may indicate the beginnings of a real problem for the Prime Minister. I think the dial uh, has shifted today, partly as a result of the way this whole matter has been handled. Handled. Also, partly, I think that more colleagues have been able to get back to their constituencies and hearing what people are saying on the doorsteps. Vladimir Putin made a rare appearance on Russian TV with his defence minister Sergei Shogu on Thursday as he was given a progress report on his war on Ukraine. Russia's claim in victory in Mariupol despite the Ukrainian marines and civilians who remain holed up in the former Azovstal steel plant. In fact, there was some good news for those Ukrainian fighters as Putin called off a final assault. There is no need to climb into these catacombs and crawl underground through these industrial facilities. Block off this industrial area so that a fly cannot pass through. Video emerged from the Ukrainian troops in the steel plant who say Russia's been dropping bunker-busting bombs on them and that they've wounded men in need of medicine and medical treatment. There are also civilians trapped there. They are staying in several basements with an average of 80 to 100 in each. But we don't know the precise number since some of the buildings are completely destroyed. Russia's also refused to agree a truce for Orthodox Easter this weekend. Meanwhile, US President Joe Biden delivered more military aid for Ukraine, including the heavy artillery that President Zelensky has been requesting. That makes over $3 billion of aid in just the last six weeks. Some military experts now estimate that Ukraine has more tanks in the field than Russia. Today, I'm announcing another $800 million to further augment Ukraine's ability to fight in the east in the Donbass region. This package includes heavy artillery weapons, dozens of howitzers, and 144,000 rounds of ammunition. It also includes more tactical drones. Home Secretary Priti Patel addressed the Commons on Tuesday to defend her plan to send refugees and asylum seekers to Rwanda. It came under fire from all sides, including from former Home Secretary and Prime Minister Theresa May. She said she couldn't vote for it on grounds of legality, practicality and efficiency. And she wanted to know more about the details and the risk that it would just serve to make matters worse. Does she not believe that this will not simply lead to an increase in the trafficking of women and children. Priti Patel refused to clarify the criteria for the scheme, claiming it was too sensitive information to share with the House. The Right Honourable Lady will know very, very well that actually it's that type of criteria that is used by the smuggling gangs to then effectively exploit various loopholes in our existing laws. 
Labour's shadow Home Secretary Yvette Cooper described the scheme as unworkable and unethical and says the Home Secretary hasn't been doing her job either. And there has been a total failure to crack down on criminal gangs that are at the heart of this problem. The prosecutions for human trafficking, for non-sexual exploitation, are down from 59 in 2015 to just two in 2020. Just two. The long legal battle over WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange moved a step closer to a conclusion on Wednesday. The US has been seeking his extradition on spying charges over the release of classified documents relating to the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. He's been fighting to stay in the UK where he's currently in Belmarsh Prison, but a judge ruled the extradition could go ahead pending approval by UK Home Secretary Priti Patel. Julian's wife Stella Morris spoke to reporters outside the court. Boris Johnson and Priti Patel can stop this at any time. They can stop it today. They can do the right thing and enforce Article 4 of the US-UK extradition treaty, which prohibits extraditions for political offences. Right now, they're in breach of their own treaty. She's had support too from former Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn, who pledged to continue the battle. We'll carry on campaigning with our many friends all across the United States in support of Julian, free speech, journalism and democracy. Still to come on the Standout 7, Johnny Depp testifies in court and Nick Cage clears up some urban myths right after this. Welcome back. Johnny Depp and Amber Heard's defamation trial was back in session in Virginia on Tuesday. He's suing her over an article in the Washington Post where she described herself as a victim of domestic abuse. And she's counter-suing him, of course. He took to the stand for the first time on Tuesday to say he's never hit a woman and described his own upbringing and the abuse he suffered at the hands of his mother. She was quite violent and she was quite cruel. There was physical abuse, which could uh, be in the form of an ashtray being flung at you, (laughs) hit you in the head or... You'd get beat with a high heel shoe or a telephone or whatever's handy. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have been back in the spotlight as the Invictus Games have been taking place in the Netherlands all week. The American networks have caught up with him too, and he spoke to NBC's Today Show about having the chance to visit the Queen. It was great. It was it was just so nice to see her. You know, she's on she's on great form. We always she's always got a great sense of humour uh, with me, and I'm just making sure that she's you know protected and got the, the right people around. Well, you- Maybe he's spent too long in the states, as he's also convinced that his mum, Princess Diana, is keeping a watchful eye on things. Do you ever feel your mom's presence? It's constant. Um, it's almost as though she's done her bit with my brother, and now she's very much like helping me. He got got him set up. Now she's helping me set up. That's what it feels like. Nicholas Cage is one of a kind. He's been in more blockbusters than nearly any man alive, and he rarely does interviews or appears publicly. But he's currently promoting his new movie, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, in which he stars as Nick Cage. It's quite complicated, but it's getting great reviews. He popped up on Jimmy Kimmel to clear up some long-standing urban myths about himself. Were you stalked by a mime? Yes. Yes. And that, that is just so weird. Yeah. Because that, that is one of those things that made me ask the proverbial question, why? <laughs> they had the Marceau, Marceau makeup, and they were like mime slapping each other, and I'd walk, and I'm like, what are you, who are you people? Go away. Please. This has been the Standout 7, the best of the week from the Smart 7. We'll be back tomorrow, 7am, with the Sunday 7. Have a great rest of your weekend.